Hello everyone, my name is Dr Paul Rose and this is a short presentation that provides some key tips and pointers on how to give a time constrained talk at MSc level on a particular research topic. This presentation is going to cover these key points. Why do we give presentations on scientific research? How do we get our message across to our audience in an interesting, engaging and accessible manner? Why is it really important to keep to time and some hints and tips on how to do that? And how to engage your audience so they follow along with you, they understand the key pointers and meanings of what you're saying and they leave with a thorough comprehension of the topic that you have presented on. So first up, why do we give talks on research? Most importantly, this is to show that you as a research student can communicate your science orally. You are able to expand upon the key messages from research outputs. And this shows that you understand the point of that research and why it was conducted. It's all very well and good to be able to write about research, but explaining it verbally in an accessible manner is a really important skill in science communication. It also enables you to demonstrate that you understand the point of key research outputs, their conclusions, results and application. And by providing key information in a particular manner, in a time bound and accessible way, allows you to really engage with people that might be interested in your, might be interested in your research they are the audience for that research and therefore you are showing your expertise and proficiency as a researcher. It also allows you to demonstrate your skills in selecting relevant information from the literature and explaining its meaning. It gives you a platform to expand upon the most important points around that research so that the reader knows precisely what's current, relevant or really applicable from the field that you are studying or investigating. Let's consider how you best get your message across to your audience. First up, do background research. Know the topic area that you need to present on. Do wider reading, look at current papers and look at seminal papers as well that have been built on. What are the key most important pieces of literature that give you an authority on that topic? Highlight specific points, examples, authors and research outputs that are most crucial to effective delivery and that show your understanding. And use all of the tools in PowerPoint that enable you to make information accessible and interesting to your audience. Smart art, for example, icons and the slide designer tool that enables you to be creative and engaging with your slide design are all better than countless bulleted lists. Remember to consider how much information you put on your slides. Avoid too much background detail and description of interesting points. Avoid going off on tangents. Stick to the topic that you need to cover. And that means Give an equal amount of focus to each area, to each segment of your talk. If you're doing a traditional academic presentation with an introduction, a methods, a results and a discussion section, give each one the same amount of time. If you're critiquing two papers in your talk, give each paper the same amount of time and space. Don't talk more about areas that you feel more comfortable with but then leave out other areas that are equally as important. Use your prep time to become more comfortable with those more challenging areas so you can present on them better and more effectively to your audience. And please remember, cite examples as you go and show the audience that you are an authority, an expert as it were, on the background literature. Examples should be embedded into your slides and used to explain where information has come from in exactly the same way as you would do in an essay or a report.
once you've got your presentation and you've got the backbone of what you're going to say, practice because it's really important to keep to time. A transferable skill that comes from doing presentations at MSc level is the training you get as a scientist to present your work to an audience, which is super important if you go and present at outside conferences and symposia. The chair of a session at an outside conference is not going to like you if you go over time and take up time from other people. That screws up the schedule, it makes everybody more stressed and it's very anxious for the people chairing. So this is training you to keep to time. So time limits are not optional, they're not there just for fun, they are there for you to stick to, to be professional and show you can follow instructions. So think about how much time do you need to explain things clearly. You need to be evaluative and show you understand, but don't be too effusive on particular points. Don't go off on tangents. Don't tell interesting stories that you think are really uh, relevant, but actually don't cover the key parts of the research. Be brutal in your self-editing of what you're going to say in the same way as you would self-edit a report or an essay so you don't go over the word limit. And please consider the logistics of the talk that you want to give. A 10 minute presentation, for example, with 10 slides is one minute per slide. But if you're doing a 10 minute presentation and you've created 20 slides, that's only 30 seconds per slide. What can you feasibly cover in that time limit? How much information are you going to be able to present well and accurately in 30 seconds compared to a minute? Fewer slides of a better quality are much, much, much more effective at getting your point across than a larger quantity of slides with weaker content. So practice and then practice some more and perhaps record yourself maybe on PowerPoint or on Teams or Zoom and re-watch it. I know that's cringeworthy. Nobody likes to watch themselves presenting, but it's the best way you can improve how you present, how you explain, how you engage with an audience and how you keep to time. Timekeeping is a super important skill that the research scientists need to develop to fit their talk into the schedule of academic conferences. And last, but by no means least, how do you keep your audience engaged? You've got your material, you know your subject, and you're going to keep to time because you've practiced. Think about how the content is presented on each slide. Bulleted lists have their place, but please don't do them on every slide. People can just read along. Why are you there presenting if everything you're gonna say is in a bulleted list? Use diagrams, illustrations and figures. Be creative with the text that you present. Again, think about smart art, icons and the creative design tools available in packages like PowerPoint. Use pictures and photographs. These are excellent for demonstrating key messages. To quote that very old uh, saying, a picture speaks a thousand words, so long as you are confident at explaining it. And are you prepared to answer questions on that picture if the audience want to know more about it? Please don't assume technical knowledge on the part of the audience. Give enough text so key information is accessible. That means explain key terms or terminology. Give references or citations where appropriate. And don't have really short statements that are meaningless without further evaluation and explanation from you as the presenter. Remember to present to your audience. Use your slides as a prop for your delivery. Not a script that you read from, but something that is there to support the overall presentation of the topic. Remember, you are central to clear delivery. You are the person giving the presentation. You are the subject expert. The text, figures, illustrations and diagrams are all the optional extras around you as the presenter and you are the focal point of the talk itself.
Key conclusions from this presentation are to practice. It really does make perfect. Don't create too many slides. Avoid the temptation to put masses and masses of information into your presentation. You should be the focal point of the presentation and you are explaining the things on your slides that support your delivery. Practice some more once you've started putting together your talk and check things like your font size and colour and slide background colour. Think about people that are colour blind and how mixes of font colours and shades might work. Avoid light fonts on a light background and dark fonts on a dark background. Can the audience read your slides from a distance? Ensure you have covered all academic content. You know the research papers you are going to critique and you can explain them fluently to your audience. Remember that not everything needs to be a bulleted list. So practice again once you have got your overall talk formatted. Know your subject before you present, do your wider reading, be familiar with the examples and again, practice your timings once again and you will do a good job at being engaging, informative, academic and accessible in the research that you present. Thanks very much.